video game scoring, I always think 7 out of 10 is a score that covers the widest multitude of sins. Some 7 out of 10 games aren't really all that great, but they scrape in because there's nothing that wrong with them and going lower feels kind of harsh. Some 7 out of 10 games really are great, but just have a few too many little flaws to deserve an 8. Cotton 100% on the other hand, my copy of which was kindly supplied by Indian Games, is neither of those borderline cases. Instead, it is the absolute epitome of a 7 out of 10 game. It's fine, it's good, it's simple fun, and it's hard to imagine anybody coming away from it hating the game. It's also hard to imagine anyone coming away absolutely loving the game. The port job has been handled by Rattalika Games, and everything will feel very familiar to anyone who played their recent and very solid port of Glaylancer. One difference here is that the in-game story has not been translated this time, but honestly who cares, Cotton and Silk are off to find Willows, and that's all you ever really need to know. The screen options are again quite extensive, a rewind feature has been added and functions very intuitively, and the game also supports save states. There are two different ways to play the game, one standard in which these modern editions are enabled, and one challenge in which they are turned off. A slightly odd feature here is that the challenge mode allows for cheats like infinite lives, max power or max fairies to be turned on, rendering the game obviously a whole lot easier. But in order to unlock these cheats, you have to beat the game in the challenge mode first, and if you can do that, it's hard to see why you would want the cheats. But whatever, that is a minor oddity, and the port job is, in general, just as it was with Glaylancer, solid enough. Playing in docked mode with a pro controller or arcade stick, movement felt pretty smooth. In handheld, maybe a little sluggish, but fear not, you can rest assured that this is absolutely nothing like the cotton Saturn ports we recently suffered through. The game itself is... I mean, it's cotton, but it's cotton in possibly its most basic form. You have your standard forward shot which can be powered up both by picking up the gems dropped by enemies to raise your experience, or by defeating certain red demons who will grant you fairies who will then gather around you and provide additional firepower. You also have an infinite supply of bombs, although these are not what we would usually consider bombs, i.e. dealers of screen clearing devastation, instead these are little lobbed shots for taking out ground based enemies more in the realm of firecrackers than bombs. Replacing what would be a proper bomb system is the magic system, but this is far less intricate than in many other cotton games. You have three different magic attacks available, and at the start of the game you can choose the three spells you wish to use. You can then cycle through these in-game, and doing so affects the formation and behaviour of any fairies you've managed to collect too. Unlike in previous cotton games, your magic stock is far more limited here, and really does work like a bomb system, with you being given only 3 charges to start, and extras being relatively few and far between. Your stock also does not replenish after each death, meaning judicious use of this resource is a must. Fortunately, you won't require these attacks that often, as the game is a fairly light and breezy affair, for the most part. I had seen it called easy when reading up on it after it was announced, but I feel like not difficult is a fair description, as you will likely need a little practice, and it does offer harder difficulties for those who want them. The main reason for the lack of serious difficulty is that despite this being a shoot 'em up, very few enemies actually shoot back. Instead, it is the enemies themselves you have to watch out for as they try to collide with you, although several do throw projectiles like axes or arrows, these usually following arcs of limited range however, and not really acting like traditional enemy bullets. Some, especially the clouds, do have a habit of blending in a bit with the backgrounds, and you should also get used to seeing the same enemies a lot, as the range of types is not particularly extensive here, meaning you're going to be seeing the same guys over and over from stage to stage. Stages which, by the way, look quite attractive early on, and have a kind of dreamy, pastel colouring to them, but which can also start to feel a little samey at points, and don't exhibit quite the same charm as other cotton releases. They also have some very odd mixes between background elements that do and don't block your path, with pillars in interior sections, for example, being impossible to guess which will be which on a first playthrough. These can also cause some confusion as both enemies and cotton will disappear behind them, potentially leading to some unfair deaths. Bosses are a lot more varied, with each of the seven stages having a unique mid-boss and a final boss. 
How difficult these bosses are is going to hugely depend on the state in which you arrive at them. If you've negotiated the stage without issue and are fully powered up, many of them can be dispatched before they've even had a chance to reach their second phase. If you've recently taken a hit or two and arrive underpowered, however, you can expect to be facing off against them for a very long time indeed. And once you've beaten them all and the far more tricky last boss, I have to say I think most people will probably be mostly done with this one. There's not much in the way of scoring with end of stage bonuses being given for remaining magic charges and tea time of course making its return, although in this case there is no extra bonus for avoiding all of the reigning cups. Scoreboards are simple local affairs but there's not such a problem here because while I'd say this may be a fun one to go back to now and then for a quick run through, it's hard to imagine many people feeling inclined to dedicate significant amounts of time to it. So like I said at the start, Con 100% is fine, it's good, it's simple fun, the port job is decent enough and it's hard to imagine anyone will either hate it or love it to pieces. In short, it is a perfect example of a 7 out of 10 schmuck. You could do better, but you could also do significantly worse. So let us know your thoughts on what is already the fourth cotton release of this year, or your experiences with Panorama Cotton, which is releasing at the same time. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.